Well, hello, and once again, I want to thank you for tuning in to Addiction Free. I'm your host, Evangelist Candy Rose, and here is my co-host and my own pastor, Pastor Gary Jennings. And we have some exciting show for you today because Pastor Gary also is the founder of the Father's House for Men and Women. And he's going to be interviewing uh, a couple that are both graduates. And you're going to be so blessed because I'm telling you what, their lives truly show you that Jesus is the answer. So call somebody, text them, and tell them we're on the air. Again, it's an honor to uh, co-host the Addiction Free TV show today. And it's a, a great day for us. I have a couple here that I'm so proud of. Uh, they were both graduates of the Father's House program. At the time they were in the program, they were single. But uh, what well, started out as, uh, I don't know whether it started with chemistry or ministry, but we it may have started with chemistry, but we, we wound up in ministry, which is an awesome thing. And uh, so uh, Carly uh, has started a, a home for ladies. Uh, Richie has a home for men. He also is a pastor planning a church here in Hot Springs, Arkansas, doing great things for God. They've got their first building that they're purchasing. It's just, it's just, a, God's just doing amazing things in their life. And it's such an honor to introduce them today. Richie and Carly Willis, make them welcome as they join our program today. Hi, everyone. I'm Richie Willis. Um, I'm one of the graduates from the father's house with brother gary jennings and this is my wife carly here today and uh, we both struggled in addiction the father's house is a faith-based program six-month program for men and women that struggle with drug addiction and alcoholism and uh, just addictions of life and uh, it's a place that as a, a farm for men and women where you can go and get your life in order and get away from the drugs and alcohol and it's faith-based and it's about god and uh, that's what got a hold of my life. Uh, God uh, got a hold of me at the Father's house. Uh, to back up a little bit on my testimony, um, where I come from, uh, these teeth ain't real. Um, I had long hair. Um, I was beat up and beat down. Um, I started out as a ball player, young, young ball player. I always wanted to play baseball. Uh, I lived baseball, dreamed baseball. Had old men uh, practicing with me with baseball, and um, I just always loved sports i was a sports guy i really if you'd have thought um if you'd have asked me when i was younger what i was going to do i was going to be a professional baseball player um that's what i dreamed and that's what i believed and i even had scouts looking at me at the age of 16 and um through a period of time i started hanging out with some guys in school that um you know smoked marijuana and and uh Little did I know these guys uh, tried a little cocaine and tried a little methamphetamines. And uh, before you knew it, um, I was introduced to intravenous drugs using methamphetamines. And then, of course, we were smoking marijuana. We were taking acid. We were going to rock and roll concerts on the weekends. And everybody in the car was tripping. Uh, we didn't have designated drivers. We didn't know what a designated driver was because he was higher than anybody else. And, uh, you know, we, we uh, I don't know how we made it home from these concerts. Don't know uh, really even at the concerts that we were at a lot of times. Um, I don't know how we got there and how we got home. And uh, we were really messed up. And it had to be God back then uh, watching over me because I've always been crazy. I always had motorcycles. I always had fast motorcycles, and and um, only God could have been watching out for me. Even back then, God had a plan for my life. I didn't know uh, Him real well then, but I knew there was a God. But to get to the uh, get through my testimony, methamphetamines took over. Um, I started catching a lot of felonies, and uh, I ended up in prison. Uh, prison. I went to prison my first time. Uh, got out of prison and uh, thought I was going to do good. I, I got, you know, I went to prison boot camp my first time. And uh, when I come out of prison boot camp, I really thought I was going to do good. Uh, prison boot camp was a setup for me, though, because in prison boot camp, you had to memorize these first 10 rules to get these whites on your shoulders. And the reason you wanted these whites was 30, day later, 30 days later, you could get the blues and you could get visitation. So, I wanted my dad to come see me in prison because he had disowned me because of drugs. And so I had to memorize these rules. And these were long, 
lengthy rules. And I didn't know it at the time, but God was training me to memorize. I came out of prison, and my first wife, she was still uh, using crack cocaine, and I didn't know it at the time. I'd even used crack cocaine for two and a half years, um, and I didn't know it at the time that she was still using that. And two weeks out of prison, um, I, I ended up back on crack cocaine with my wife, uh, and uh, it was right back in that same old mess again. And uh, I was in that whirlwind. And uh, so I ended up catching the charge uh, that was going to send me back to prison. And thank God, God had a plan. Uh, the plan was for me to uh, go to go to rehab. They gave me one more chance to go to rehab. This made my fourth trip to rehabs. I've uh, been to prison twice, in and out of jails, and four rehabs in my life. And this made the fourth one. And this one, um, I went in, and, and God literally, uh, I'd been crying out to God to deliver me from crack cocaine. Um, when, and my wife at the time, two weeks out of prison, she committed suicide in the same apartment I was in. She shot herself in the heart, committed suicide, and uh, I lived through that through the next few months, the burial, the grave, the family the whole nine yards of uh, all her family looking at me with hate. And I told God at that time, I said, uh, I'm a crackhead. And I said, I don't know why you made me or created me. I said, but if you don't deliver me from crack cocaine, I'm leaving this earth. And I had, and God knew I was serious. And so two months later, I smoked crack all the way through that mess and through that pain and two months later, I caught a shoplifting charge, and that's when they was going to send me back to prison, but they put me in rehab. And in rehab, I did not want to be there, Brother Gary. I did not want to be in another rehab. I did not want to be where people were telling me what to do and how to do it. But two weeks into this program uh, called the Quapaw House, um, God Almighty wretched down inside of me and snatched crack cocaine out of my life and set me free from one of the most powerful drugs on the face of this earth. And God showed me how powerful he is and how mighty he is. And uh, he delivered me from crack cocaine. And um, I knew I was free. Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And he, he wretched down and took that drug out of my life. Uh, a few months later, I told God, since I knew God had power and I knew he had authority, I said, I need a house. God, I need a place to live. My mom and dad's tired of supporting this old boy. And so uh, I ran into a guy, the house we're living in now, uh, 12 years ago, God gave me this old wretched house that was torn down, beat up, windows were bad, you know, the city was going to condemn it, and uh, I made a deal with the landlord, uh, he let me move in this house with no money down, and uh, to work on it so the city wouldn't condemn it, and um, I ended up getting this house, uh, God let me have this house from this man, and it's the house that I'm still living in now, um, uh, 12 years ago, this house was an old, wretched house, and now it's got windows and carpet and doors. And I do want to tell you this story, though. I ended up back on methamphetamines uh, in that house, and I ended up selling a lot of methamphetamines, and I ended up getting busted by the drug task force. I've been raided twice in this same house by the DTF, and um, this time they were sending me to prison. But let me tell you what prison boot camp did. Prison boot camp taught me how to memorize. And I was so sick and tired of drugs that I began to go to church for the first time in my life, and I heard the worship music from church. And the first time I heard that worship music, it literally just turned my heart inside, and I knew then that that was what I needed to turn my life around and that I wanted God. And so I began to go to church every time the door was open, every Sunday and Sunday night, and Every uh, every Wednesday night, I would go to church every time the doors opened. Started going to Monday night Bible study group of some people who began to love on me and teach me the Word of God. And what I found out was the Word was going to change my life. And they kept telling me, you got to read the Word. you got to read the Word. And I, I didn't like to read, so I told God, I said, if you want me to read this Bible, you better put it in me. And so God did. He began to help me read the Word of God. And today... 
let me tell you, that word becomes such a fire upon me, and it's a, such a love of my life that the word of God begins to change you, begins to change the way you think, the way you act. And so I, they were sending, I got raided by the drug task force during that time, and they were sending me to prison. Uh, some people went to bat for me. I ended up getting 10 years with five suspended, the Y drop to a C, and the habitual fender drop. So I had to go do five years in prison. But I only had to do eight months on five years. But that whole eight months, I was in the Word of God every day, studying and memorizing. I'd get down and do push-ups, Brother Gary, and I, I'd write scriptures down in front of me. And I wasn't slapping dominoes and playing cards no more in jail. I was memorizing the Word of God. I was doing push-ups. I'd do 20. So I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If God be for me, who can be against me? And I just begin to let the Word of God. God changed my life, and uh, man has it ever. And you know the Word of God never returns void, but accomplishes that that is set out to accomplish and prospers wherever it goes. And what was prospering was me inside of me. Yeah. And, you know, let me give you one more scripture before I let my wife talk. It said, This book of the law, Joshua 1, 8, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. See, it didn't ask me how many felonies I had. It didn't ask me about my past or how much drugs I'd done. It said if I would meditate on his word day and night, that I would be prosperous and I would have good success. And God has shown out and showed up in our lives, and now we get to share it with men and women, and I'm excited about what God's doing. Honey? Tell them what God's done for you. And this is my this is my helpmate and my and, and the love of my life that God's brought in my life um, at the right time. I didn't want a woman when she come along, but Brother Gary seemed to prophesy it for us that uh, we were going to be together, and uh, he kind of spoke this one on us. And I am so glad. I'm so glad God brought her in my life because she loves God, and and uh, what a testimony she's got. Hello, I'm, my name is Carly, and I love the Lord with all my heart. Um, he, he has brought me out of a re really dark place in my life. Uh, I grew up, uh, my mom was a stripper my whole life, and I grew up in the strip clubs, and I started in there at a very young age. Um, and I used to see people drinking and doing drugs and everything around me, and uh, I just didn't want to go down that road at first. But I was still in there and around those people, but... Uh, I ended up having kids, and and just uh, later on in my life, just that lifestyle got to me. I ended up on cocaine. I ended up being with this man that uh, he blacked out on drugs before I almost ended up killing me. And uh, he broke all my ribs. He did about 15 sets of five to my ribs, and I didn't know the Lord at the time. But my very first encounter with, with the Lord is when uh, one night he came in and he blacked out, and he started uh just going to work on me, and uh, and at the end, he was going to kick my head in. He was going to kill me, and I said, Lord, uh, I, I know you're real, and I just want to be with you in heaven, and uh, just let me be with you, and if, if I die, and let my sisters find my body. Well, when, when he went to kick me, his knee went out in midair, and so, but I didn't ever hold anything against him because it was the drugs, and I knew that he blacked out. And so, uh, and so that was just the one stage in my life, the, the cocaine. Well, later on in my life, I had got in, introduced to pills. Uh, I took Xanax for a long time to help me sleep. Xanax had become my, my ultimate first drug of choice, and uh, it just took all my problems away. Um, Xanax took me to a dark world of you. Uh, I used to shoot up pills. I got to shooting up pills, and I'm telling you, um, it took me to a place that I never thought I would be. I used to work in Johnson's Tanning. It's basic prostitution. I let those people just do anything and everything they wanted to me. Um, I was an escort agent. Uh, the pills took me to a place in my life that I never thought I would go. I used to eat my throw up to put my pills back in my system. I used to walk around on the streets. I used to diarrhea have diarrhea all over my pants, and I didn't care. I was a zombie. I was a dead woman walking. Um, one day, we were 
driving in the car, and I was on the passenger side, and at that point, I couldn't sit up, I couldn't stand up, I couldn't lay down, and I had my hands around my knees, and I was looking outside of the people walking down the sidewalk, and I said, Lord, I just want to be like one of them. I just want to be able to walk down the sidewalk. Um, I went through another trial in my life. I could have committed suicide. I was four and a half pregnant, four and a half months pregnant with twins I didn't know about. About 24 weeks, those babies were born. They went, I went into labor. They shut the whole emergency room down. One of my babies died. She was, um, my baby boy died. He was two pounds, and my little girl, Emma, survived at one pound. And I was mentally insane at the time, and one of our family members ended up adopting her. And so then the enemy could have took me out. And uh, I just remember that footprint in the sand palm. And uh, that's what I think about when I think about that. The whole time that I never knew Jesus was there, the whole time that he carried me. And uh, so that was just a bad time in my life. Well, I've been through rehabs, many rehabs. I went, I got raided a long time ago when my son was real little when I was on the cocaine. I went to Barb's place about uh, nine years ago. And I just went in there and I danced for those people for the court because I just wanted my son back. But there was no... There was no intent to change inside of me. Um, I was just going to get out of that court system and get back. Well, um, guess what I did? I got out of the court system. I got my kids back. Guess what? I got them took again because it was something inside of me that had to change. And because uh, the God, he, he knew 2,000 years ago what he wanted us to do for him. And he knew that day when his babies were going to get it. And so... Uh, Finally, I ended up with double pneumonia. This was at my last year of doing drugs. I was in Johnson's Tanning prostituting. Um, I ended up uh, with double pneumonia, almost died in the hospital, and I was in Dallas. And uh, this woman named Missy Reed, she's from Teen Challenge. I remembered her name a long time. Well, I knew her a long time ago. I used to work in the strip clubs with her. But I remembered her name. She reached out to me about two years before that, and uh, I, I I knew I couldn't live anymore, and she uh, sent me, she gave me Brother Gary's number, and they, she, they had sent me over to the Father's House for Women, and that is when the Lord began to love on me, and I didn't know it at the time, but they, they took me to church, they told me that I was somebody, um, they loved on me, and uh, I went, was in, in the jails, they came and got me out of the jails, <laughs> and uh, put me in the jails. Came and got me out of the jails. But see, when I was in there the first eight months, I didn't really, I really didn't want it. But I didn't know that those seeds were being sowed that could not be removed. And so I, I got out at eight months and I went out and relapsed in two weeks. See, I said, I don't ever have a problem. I don't have a problem with alcohol. I'll never use pills again, but I don't have a problem with alcohol. And I got out and I started drinking. Within two weeks, I was shooting up pills again. And I called the court system on myself and I told them that I started using again. Well, they put me back in jail, and it was Brother Gary that came back to that jail again. And I said, don't come in here. I don't, I'm not going back. I have gave too much of my life. I'm never going to get it. I'm always going to do this. And he said, Carly, just give me three more months of your life. You have a calling on your life. And I said, okay, Brother Gary, if I'm really going to do it this time, I'm really going to do it. And at three months clean at, in restoration, he had put me over the Father's House for Women with with Miss uh, Brenda, and uh, and so I was in there, and so uh, I stayed in that building for about two years of my life because I stayed in there. What was the father's house? I was working over there. It was with Shalom, and then I just want to give back for what God does for me. Now we have a women's house with five women in it. Um, every day, I just I, I just thank the Lord. Uh, I thank Him for the sunshine. I thank Him for the rain. I thank Him for my husband. He has given me all my kids back. The devil stole all my kids a long time ago. My 18-year-old, I got to watch her do her senior prom this year. She is graduating this year. I got my 5-year-old back that I lost when she was 1 years old. I got my 10-year-old back that I lost when he was 4 years old. There is nothing, there is nothing that the Lord won't give back to us. And today I'm going to kick the devil in his mouth for everything that he has ever took us through. And so we are all called together. It's not, it's not if we get it, it's when we get it. And we're all, and we're, and it's not about us, but it's all about the Lord. I used to say, I'll never go back, but I say, 
I'll never go back, but by the grace of God, because it's not about us, but it's about heaven, and he's coming back for us soon, and we want to take as many as people as we can with us. And one night I was laying in bed. I said, Lord, thank you for not letting me die out there. Thank you for saving my life. And he said, Carly, I didn't save your life. I remade you, and I didn't remake you for, to be that same person. I remade you to work for me and to love for me and to serve me because he took me out of a mental addiction. I was schizophrenia. I was full-blown schizophrenic I couldn't talk to people I couldn't look at people in their eyes and everybody said she'll always be a crackhead she'll always be nothing she'll always be trash and God says that is who I'm using we are the ones that he uses because he can use anybody but he rises us up because it is for the glory of his kingdom and so now we got five women with five different personalities and I'm in love with every one of them Look, we want to tell this. We want to tell you on TV that you are looking at miracles and that you are looking at what God can do in a life. Prison twice, in and out of jail, four rehabs, bound by methamphetamines from the age of 16. There is no way that you can look upon us today and look at the joy in our life and look at us set free today. It's Jesus. It's God. It's his word. It's him. It is him. Get to a place where you can get your mind free and get your heart free. Get off of the drugs. Get to a rehab. Get to a place where you can get your mind clear and then get with God. Let him change your life. He loves us. He has a plan for yes, us. Jesus. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, For I know the plans that I have for you, plans of good and not evil, plans yes. of a future and a hope. And yes. if God can do it for us, yes. If God can clean us up, today I have a, a powerful a roofing company. I have vehicles. I have one of the nicest Harley-Davidson motorcycles. All our bills are paid for. We have the right insurance, the right <laughs> tags. We're not stealing people's tags anymore. And Our, le our yes. insurance is actually legal today. And Oh, man, God is so good, and we are so <laughs> blessed. And uh, we have the real joy today, and it comes from him. For the joy of the Lord is your strength today. Yeah. And we want you to know God loves you. And yeah. God has a plan for you. Friends, you heard some wonderful testimonies from Richie and Carly. As you can tell, God has radically changed their lives. And you know, some of you are sitting out there and some of you are going through some horrendous consequences. You're going through uh, suffering maybe uh, uh, what you're going to have to face through court. Maybe with your children. You're going through uh, things with your finances. You see, the, the, John 10.10, 10, the Bible says the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, he starts targeting us when we're younger uh, with things that happen to us. And pretty soon before you know it, we're, we're looking for peace and love and acceptance in all the wrong places and faces. But I tell you what, it's found in Jesus. As you heard from their testimonies, the, the devastation that happened in their lives and how the devil wanted to just wipe them out. Well, let me tell you, that's what he's trying to do in your life. If you're sitting there and you're struggling with something, that's what he's trying to do with you. But let me tell you, the other part of that verse of John 10, 10 says, the Bible says that Jesus said he's come to give you life and life more abundantly. Folks, it's time. Don't waste another day, another moment. Give your life to Jesus today. Let me lead you in a prayer and you can have that same joy and peace he can restore everything that the enemy meant for bad in your life. Just say this prayer with me and mean it with your whole heart. The key is not just saying it. It means repentance means turning. Be willing to turn. Now, you may say, how can I turn? Well, with the power of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is mean it with your whole heart, and he will come in and give you the power and the joy, the peace, and the purpose. So say this prayer after me and just mean it. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for loving me, never giving up on me. Jesus, I'm willing to leave the old life behind and follow you with my whole heart. Thank you for loving me. I love you, Jesus. Amen. So God bless you. Jesus loves you. And we'll see you next time. Hi, my name is Robert Scott. I'm the program director of the Father's House Ministry. We are a Christian discipleship program for men and women located in Donaldson, Arkansas. What we are is a recovery ministry. We, and if we, 
use the commands outlined for the God outlined for you in the Bible on how to live your life and use that to help people assist and, and provide a drug, alcohol, and nicotine-free environment where people can learn and practice self-discipline. Like it doesn't cost anything to come to our ministry, and we would love for you to get some information from us. Thank you. I'm Richie Willis, and this is my wife, Carly Willis. Uh, we both run homes in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We both come out of addictions and out of a long life of bondage of of drugs and alcohol and uh, we've been set free by the blood of Jesus and uh, God has radically taken over our lives and now we both have ministry she has a, a house for women and I have a house for two houses for men um, and they're faith-based houses and we just thank God for it I just encourage if you're struggling with any kind of addiction or you know someone uh, in, a, in your family or someone just maybe one layer of, of connection of a person removed from you, please proactively take the initiative to reach out to them and say, hey, I saw this program where, you know what, there's actually help, there's actually hope. We'll be happy to talk to you, happy to bring you in or talk to you about that loved one that needs to come in. Hi, my name is Michael Vecchio. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Project Hope and Saving Grace. And our mission at this ministry is to help people that struggle with addiction, depression, abuse, and homelessness. We offer one year of free residential care to them. They don't have to worry about having insurance or making monthly payments. Currently, we operate out of Texas and Florida, but we're able to help people nationwide. my grave. His plan had moved forward to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost? I knew my destruction was a matter of time. But Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine. Now I'm safe from all harm. 